friends, it's Joyce from Morris Patch of Heaven Homestead, and today I'm sitting in the park. I just wanted to bring you guys along and show you some of the wonderful books that I got from Joel while we were at Homesteaders of America. That guy is simply amazing. I got some of the most amazing books, and I wanted to share them with you, and you know what? He signed every one of them. He signed them for us. Can you believe that? And I got to give him a hug. We got to talk for a bit. He is an awesome man. Um, and you know what? I feel like he is so down to earth, which is, I think, the way it should be. Anymore, it seems like when channels get really big, they, um, they just act different. He's not like that. He is so down to earth, which is so awesome. The kiddos are riding their scooters around. It is 75 degrees. Can you believe that? For the middle of October here in Missouri, this is great weather. The trees on the top are starting to change colors. I'll have to show you, uh, I'll turn it around in a bit and show you how the maple leaves are starting to turn. They should have already been turned by now, but they haven't because it's been so warm. But I thought, what a wonderful day to just sit outside, share some of these awesome books with you um, so that you too can have these in your library. These are must have books. There are certain books that, you know, we just have to have I am a book fanatic, as you probably already know. <laughs> I love books, and now Jean's that way, and my children love to get books and read. It's a wonderful thing. I think books are one of those things that we all need to have because you never know. One day the internet may shut down on us, and we may not have access to the web for all this wonderful information. So it's so good to have these in your arsenal and just have them for reference. Um, so anyway, let me turn you around and show you which books I just got. Okay, The Marvelous Pigness of Pigs. Oh my gosh, guys, this is such an amazing read. We haven't read all of it yet, I've just started, but it is just so amazing. His vision of the world um, and how caring for God's creatures is so important. And it's just so neat how he puts that into perspective. And it is just a wonderful, wonderful book Look at that, signed by Joel. <laughs> um, let me just read a little bit to you. It says, It is an inspiring call to action for people of faith, a heartfelt plea to heed the Bible's guidance. So basically, this is so awesome because he talks about um, the importance of, you know, simply appreciating what God has given us. Um, and celebrating his goodness. So the Marvelous Pigness of Pigs book is simply a must read. It talks about how pigs are raised in these dark pens, given antibiotics with herbicide food, uh, just for profit. And he wants us to respect all animals. God has said in the Bible that we are to respect our animals. We are to treat them well. Um, and the way big corporations are doing that right now, just for gain, sticking them in these little pens, they never see the light of day. I mean, it is horrible. It is absolutely horrible. And so this, this book, The Marvelous Pigness of Pigs, basically talks about how we have been given um, responsibility of these animals. They can't take care of themselves and we need to do it the right way. We need to not um, feed them horrible feed and put them in confined spaces. They need to be out eating grass and getting sunshine. We need to treat them well. Um, all animals deserve that, just like we deserve that. Um, so that book is definitely a must read, um, especially for those who are just getting started on wanting to raise pigs or any kind of other animal. This, this relates to all animals and just tells us of what God expects of us. He expects us to treat our animals the right way, just how we would expect to be treated. Um, it's no different and it's being done so horribly anymore so inhumanely so anyway read this book guys yeah, um, it just kind of puts things into perspective um, and it's just one of those books that you're not going to want to put down because it is that good okay I had to move I was being attacked by bees oh my goodness this park is notorious for bees I have to tell you a story quick story real quick a quick story real quick <laughs> I have to tell you a story about um, this is crazy our daughter we were doing um, photo shoots in the park about two weeks ago 
and we had our chairs there and they were like every 20 minutes so we would sit for a few minutes and wait for the next one and she had her cup there with a straw and um, we sat down for a minute and she took a drink and lo and behold, she swallowed a bee, guys. Can you believe that? A bee. All of a sudden, I noticed she was grabbing at her throat and she was saying, I swallowed something, I swallowed something. I think I swallowed a bee. We opened her cup and sure enough, there was more bees in the cup and she couldn't breathe. She stopped breathing. Talk about scared. She was throwing up. So I had to rush her 90 miles an hour to the hospital. Um, her, uh, she got a fever. All of a sudden her fever, her, you know, that was, she was getting hot and um, I, it still makes me freak out when I think about it. So talking about it, I'm kind of mumbling here um, because it scared me to death. She, um, she couldn't stop throwing up and she just kept feeling this pain. This pain was horrific. It lasted almost, it's been two weeks and she still can feel some pain like it was swelling in there. Um, they told her that she's not allergic to bees, but um, that she probably, um, when you swallow a bee, for some reason, you know, it takes longer to heal because everything's wet and stuff in there. Um, but her blood pressure had gone up. It was crazy. We were there for a while because they would not let her go until her fever was coming down. Um, but it, the pain that she was in literally lasted forever. I mean, she couldn't eat for the longest time. I remember her just calling and crying. They put her on steroids. It didn't work. They were sticking her on different stuff and we're not ones to take anything unless it's serious and it was serious. So um, anyway, I just had to share that story with you. So be careful with bees, guys, especially when you have a cup and a straw. Don't ever take it outside with you because yeah, this is what happened. All right, guys, third time's a charm. We tried <laughs> the library park and there were so many people there. And again, there was bees. So here I was sitting on the porch thinking, okay, this is gonna be good. I saw another bee. I guess it's bee time. I don't know if the bees are confused or what because of the weather, but it's gone. So I'm gonna to try to get through this video. <laughs> the next um, book that I want to tell you about is called Beyond Labels. And that is from Joel Salatin. I'm gonna show you what it looks like in a minute. This book is simply amazing. Um, it's a a doctor and a farmer conquer food confusion one bite at a time. And so basically it's what it says beyond the labels. We need to start reading labels, guys. We need to start growing more of our own food. I'm seeing a wasp. <laughs> if I scream, forgive me. I don't do bees, I don't do wasps, especially after that story that I told you. So beware, never, ever, ever leave your drink outside with a straw. Make sure the lid is covered. And if you do have a straw, look in it. Look in the cup because that was just too scary. But anyway, so this book here, turn you around this way. Okay, so this book is simply amazing. I just started reading it on our way home from the HOA. And I was just basically reading um, some about um, Dr. Sarah McCulloch who is um, the doctor that is that wrote this book with Joel. And it is amazing. It is simply amazing the things, um, eat what you can pronounce. Um, choose organic chicken. Um, these are just some of the, the chapters in here. Um, does it bring you closer to good health, to your health goal? Does it give you more freedom? I mean, Move towards your goal and grace. Uh, let's see some of the things in here. Okay, throw out those artificial sweeteners, except for, of course, stevia, um, because that's well, really isn't an artificial sweetener. It is an, a natural sweetener other than sugar. Um, uh, let's see. Um, talk about non-GMOs, eating organic if you have to buy. It is amazing, guys. This book, Beyond Labels, there you go, if you can see that. It is a beautiful book. It's a big book, but it's a simple read. Um, Beyond Labels has the power to reshape America's declining health. That is what this is all about. His books are simply amazing. I'm telling you what, this one just really hits home. I am a big label reader. 
And it's funny because I'm teaching my children to do the same. Jedediah every now and then will want some junk. I said, okay, now read the labels to me. And so he'll start reading it to me. I said, if you cannot pronounce it, we're not eating it. And if God didn't make it, forget it, you know. And he'll get upset with me. And I said, you know what? If I let you eat that way, you know, eat, you know, the garbage and stuff, you're going to feel like garbage. And you eat garbage, you feel like garbage. So while we were out at HOA, um, being 14 hours from home, you know how that is. Even if you bring a cooler, it's a little hard. Um, it can be done and we will make do next time because what we're thinking about doing is getting one of those coolers that you can plug in so that things stay cold. Um, we usually will bring yogurt and stuff for sandwiches and stuff, but you know how you'll end up eating something you probably shouldn't and then you don't feel so good. And so um, I'm always reiterating that to him. Okay, so you don't feel good. Let's think about what you ate. Did you eat something that you shouldn't have eaten? So it's starting to hit home. And so we are really, really, really reading labels. We are trying to not go to the grocery store as much as possible because it's just best not to. I mean, some of the horror stories that you hear, it's horrible. We don't usually buy anything in cans, even though I showed you how to make pumpkin bread in cans. Those were very few. Um, it doesn't happen often, um, and usually if it is, it's like maybe a can of beans or something, um, but we don't buy vegetables or anything in cans. I try to not buy cans at all, just because I know how bad they are for you. But this book, um, let's see, it talks about eating pasture-raised pork, pork that you know um, has not been in these farms where they're kept in, you know, like I was just telling you, in these dark little huts. They never see the light of day. It's so bad. So if you're gonna buy and you can't do it at home, buy from a farmer's market. That's what this book is telling you. This book is telling you basically to go back and eat the way um, we were used to eating. You know, our ancestors ate. Staying away from the grocery store as much as possible because they don't have our best interest at heart at all. They basically do not care what they're sticking in there, the salt that they're putting in there. Um, you know, the everything's genetically modified anymore. You don't even know what you're eating. So I highly recommend this book, Beyond the Label. Uh, definitely look into it. It is amazing. It's an amazing read. We're just starting it. All of these we're just starting because we just bought them. But I just wanted to share these with you because I think that it's something that you all might want to get as well. Okay, let me get... This one is Polyface Micro, which is one that I have been wanting. And um, Justin Rhodes had that on his... Um, was sharing that on his videos for quite a while, how him and Rebecca and some of their kids have been packing these up and mailing them out for Joel. And I thought, I want one, I want one, I want one. Um, but I knew that HOA was coming up, so I thought, maybe I can save on the shipping. Well, sure enough, we got the book, and oh my word, success with livestock on homestead scale. So basically, you know Joel Salatin and how he runs a huge polyface, um, you know, selling chickens and turkeys and all of that and grass fed meat. And he does it so amazingly. Oh my gosh. One of these days, I think we're going to try to make it out to his farm and just be a steward for the day and just help out. Um, if that's something that we can do, I don't know if we can or just come for a tour, but boy, I'm telling you, he just inspires us so much. So this book is basically showing you how to do what he does on a smaller scale. So look at that look at the picture oh my gosh it's so cute um i love your ideas but only have a few acres how do i do this on on um, my scale so he basically shows you how you can do it on just a few acres how this is possible we don't have to have hundreds of acres you don't have to have hundreds of chickens and hundreds of turkeys to put this into practice um, and how he moves his animals around on the grass and how it then makes the grass that much better for the following year. I just love it. I love all of this. Um, okay, let me think here for a minute. I know I'm going to say it wrong. I can't think of it right now, but how they um, move the grass one animal to the next and how that grass just comes back much better the following year. So this is one I have not dug into yet, but I'm so excited to. And it talks about your pitfalls 
and things that may come your way. And it's got great pictures of some of the Stuarts and him working his animals and just how he shows how much better the land is after they put the animals on it. Animals were intended to be on grass. They weren't intended to be in small cages, locked in the dark, just being fed antibiotics. I look at these feedlots that are around here. There aren't very many, but there are some. And I watch these poor cows, you know, sitting on cement. When they look, they're looking across and seeing grass everywhere and longing because that's what they were intended to do is to graze and eat grass because it's so good for them. And I see them dropping their babies because um, they're, you know, they get pregnant and they're dropping their babies on cement. It is so sad. It breaks my heart every time I drive by that. And also when I drive by these turkey farms, Oh my word, it's just horrible. The smells that we get from the chicken farms and the turkey farms we're out here in the country, it can't be avoided. So we basically told ourselves that we were gonna eat differently. We did not want to be sick like, you know, people are getting sick because of the sad diet. We decided we were gonna take matters into our own hands, try to start raising our own food, um, our own meat. This is all new to us. We're on a small scale, but um, you guys can do it. And that's what he talks about in this book. He talks about even if you're in an apartment, take control of your food, start growing in pots. You know, even some small homesteads that are in the city can raise chickens. Um, some can even have um, goats. Um, we're seeing that more and more that they're allowing that. I know some HOAs don't allow anything, but if you are able, move away and start this yourself or start at least um, growing your vegetables and go to farmers market and get non-gmo organic food meat if possible it's just so necessary and then when we were at justin rhodes um, booth he gave us this poly face a world of many choices and basically it says how will we make a change the change and that starts with us guys we have to be that change. He teaches you and shows you how uh, they process their animals. We do all these things in a humane way. We raise our animals in a loving, caring way, on grass, giving them fresh, clean water, and then they have one bad day. I hope that this inspires you just a little bit to just kind of, I know I've talked about this before and I know you've seen probably lots and lots of videos about this, but it is so important, especially nowadays, guys. I'm telling you what, things are just getting, just getting weird. And food is getting hard to come by. So we really have to take responsibility for ourselves and our families. I hope that these books are something that you might want to have in your arsenal, in your library. I'm going to post those down below so that you can look them up. Um, they are definitely worth having and um, all I'm saying is, if you are able, get some seeds, start growing. If you are able, get some chicks, start raising them. You will get eggs, you will have chicken. Uh, you will be able to sustain your family. It is so important now more than ever. Anyway, guys, all I am here for is to just inspire you a little bit. I think that's what we're all here for is to help one another, just so that you too can take control of your food, especially in this day and age. But anyway, guys, I'm going to end for now. I hope that you are all well. Um, again, if you have any prayer requests, please leave them in the comments below. We pray for each and every one of them. If you have not subscribed, please do so. And we thank all of you new subscribers for subscribing. Um, today, I just wanted to share these books with you that I had gotten at HOA that are chock full of good information, teaching us how to take control of the food system the crazy warped food system and start to do things for ourselves and our families. It is so important right now. <sighs> I cannot stress it enough. But anyway, I'm going to end for now. Take care and God bless you and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.